When you're learning how pandas works, one of the most difficult things is figuring out how to get the plots and the graphics and the charts that you want. One of the extremely difficult ones is a grouped bar chart, because not only does it involve kind of reformatting your data in a certain way, but it also involves a little knowledge about how the plotting library that is attached to pandas works. The plotting library is called matplotlib, uh, it's built into pandas, and it's a good friend or a very irritating enemy. Now, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over a few different ways to create a grouped bar chart based on the way that your data might be formatted. So we're going to go through how plotting works in matplotlib in pandas. We're going to go through how to reshape our data. And then finally, we're going to put both of those together. If you want to make good plots and good graphics in pandas, in Python in general, I actually recommend not using matplotlib, matplotlib being the default ugly thing that shows up when you do df.plot. There are a few other libraries uh, that are a little bit easier to use in some ways and also just more attractive in terms of the graphs they create. One of them is called Altair. One of them is called Seaborn. So they're both, you know, they have their pluses and minuses, but generally speaking, they're going to be easier to use than something like, uh, well, okay. They're not easier to use than matplotlib. Nothing is easier than just throwing a dot plot on the end of a data frame or a series. But if you're trying to do more complicated plots, of which something like this will count, using Seaborn or Altair, learning that is probably worth it. But let's just start with matplotlib, because it's what's baked into pandas. To begin with, let's just throw a dot plot onto our data frame. It makes this awful ugly thing here. I'm just going to switch it up to a bar chart. Generally, I would make a horizontal bar chart here because I hate vertical ones. I love horizontal ones, but that'll make things a little bit too complicated. So we'll just stick with these charts that I really hate, but it'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay, if I do df.plot, what pandas does is it tries to plot all of the information that is inside of our data frame. Generally, though, uh, when you try to plot something, it's only going to successfully plot any data that is numeric. If we look at this right here, we have two bars, two bars, and two bars that are marked as donations is the blue bar, and expenses is the orange bar here. But what's happening is all of our numeric data from our data frame is being plotted by, uh, by pandas. Now, how do these groups come about, right? How does it say donations and expenses here, donations and expenses here, donations and expenses here? Where there's a hint that we see down here with this is zero, one, and two. What's happening is each one of these rows is being plotted individually as a group. So this is our first one on the left, 25 and 30, 25, 30 then 5 and 10, then 55 and 20. But where is this coming from? Where is this label down here coming from? Turns out, any time you do dot plot in pandas, as your axis down here, as your x-axis, it really wants to put the index here. When you have a data frame, these are all of your values, donations, expenses, and month. On the far left-hand side, usually in an untitled column, this is called your index. And so it's going to take the index and it's going to say, okay, for 25 and 30, we're going to plot that against 0. For 5 and 10, we're going to plot that against 1. And for 55 and 20, we're going to plot that against 2. If we want to override this, which normally you do, normally the index doesn't actually have any information in it, we can say, Take our x-axis and set it to be the month. So our x-axis is going to be our month row. So nothing changes except the fact that it said, okay, instead of using 0, 1, and 2 on our x-axis, 
we're now going to use this column instead. Seems reasonable. If we just wanted one of expenses or donations to plot, we could say on the y-axis, only plot donations. Now, what we're really interested in is these grouped bar charts here. So we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with x equals month. And for the y, pretty much every single column that's numeric ends up being plotted in a group. So this is going to be the secret to getting these grouped bar charts here. We want, let's say, big, medium, and small. If we want each of those to be a column in a group, we want each one of those to be one of our columns. A lot of times when you're trying to get a certain kind of graphic out of matplotlib or out of pandas, it's not a game of passing, you know, x and y being donations and expenses. This does work, sure, but in order to be able to write code like this, we have to reshape our data to be in the right format. Um, a third way, just to kind of throw this in here, um, because the default for plotting is the index, we could actually set the index to be the month column by using dot set index. So now we have a month as the index, donations and expenses as each one of our columns, and we can just throw a dot plot on here. And because the index is what is used as the x-axis by default, if we have something, whether we did set index or whether it's accidental, um, where we have an index that is meaningful instead of 0, 1, and 2, that is going to plot expenses and donations against months. So it seems, seems pretty fine so far. Um, the problem is we don't always have data that is going to be easily grouped. So let's talk about summarizing and um, reshaping data. We'll start with where each row is a summary line. So for here, um, we have a borough and we have a breed. So this is going to be small, uh, medium or large dogs. And then we have a count. So in Brooklyn, there are five medium dogs. In Brooklyn, there are 15 small dogs. In Brooklyn, there are 52 big dogs. Manhattan, 25 medium dogs, so on and so forth. The idea here is that each row is a summary. Each row is not a dog. Each row is the number of dogs of that size in that borough, in that part of the city. What we want, though, isn't this. If we try to plot it, df.plot uh, will do kind equals bar. It's going to be throwing a lot of bars in there. Maybe, you know, our x-axis is going to be borough. No, maybe our x-axis is going to be breed. No, none of this is going to give us a grouped bar chart. Why is it not going to give us a grouped bar chart? Because as we saw before, in order to get groups, we have to have each, we have to have multiple numeric columns, right? If we want donations and expenses to be different bars, we need donations and expenses to be different columns here. So for this one here, uh, let's say we want this to be Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx. We want these different breeds to be columns, medium, small, and big need to be the individual columns, while well, every row should be a borough. Because if you think about it, we want, instead of April, May, June, we want Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx, because every index gets its own group, right? And then every column gets its own bar. Now, what we need to do is reshape our data. The way we're going to reshape our data in this instance, if every row is a summary, is we are going to do either pivot or pivot table. Now, if we think about what we want, we want every row to be a borough and every column to be um, a, a breed, 
right? So this we want to be every row, and this we want to be every column. Now in pandas, you don't call every row a row, right? What we're thinking of is we want the burrow to actually be the index here, this number on the far left-hand side. So we can actually say, we want to make the index be the burrow, and we want our columns to be the breed. If we run this code, it's magically going to convert everything, um, where now this is an index and this is columns. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that, because um, notice that you know these are actually dark colored and they don't look like simple, um, simple indexes, uh, simple column titles, because they have like count here and read here, but it's fine, it's fine, everything's okay. This successfully reshapes it so that we have rows and columns of what we're looking to do. So let's just throw a dot plot on there because why not? Sounds fine to me. There we go, we got Brooklyn here, we got Manhattan here, we got Queens here. And each one of these is a kind of dogs. So this is big dogs, medium dogs, and small dogs, big dogs, medium dogs, and small dogs. Um, the thing that doesn't look very good here is there's this count big, count medium, count small, none breed. What we need to do is say, hey, yes, this is our x-axis here. This is our x-axis, it's fine. What is our y-axis going to be? And we say, oh, it was that count column here, and just based on the way pivot table works, we have to tell it, hey, count is what we're interested in here, big, medium, and small. So we're gonna say y equals count, and now it's gonna be a, a decent amount cleaner here. So big, medium, small breed, um, big, medium, small breed for Brooklyn, for Manhattan, and for Queens. Now, why is this the case? Why do we have to say count here when we clearly have big, medium, and small here? I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it, just trust that it's the case. Um, if you ever are in a situation where it's kind of giving you count big, count medium, count small, something like that, where it's giving you a column name three different times, just say, hey, on the y-axis, I just wanna do count and then it will kind of absorb that and your graphic will look a little bit neater here. So that is what you do anytime you have summary rows here. If you have a summary row, you can just say, give me a pivot table. Here's what my index is. It'll make that column become a row. And then here's what my column is. And it will make each one of those a column. Life will be great, life will be perfect. Sometimes, though, you don't have data that looks like that. Sometimes you have each row is a single data point. And what, what do I mean by that? So another way of looking at these dogs is let's say we have a bunch of dogs. You know, this is a dog, this is a dog, this is a dog, this is a dog. And it says this is a big dog in Queens, a big dog in Brooklyn, a small dog in Brooklyn, a big dog in Brooklyn, another big dog in Brooklyn. Here are a bunch of different small dogs in Manhattan. Now, the issue is, if you get something that looks like this, your default might be to say, hey, I want to make a group based on the borough and then count the number of each breed in each borough. This is, you know, it's on its way. Um, because it's a series, we might want to actually, you know, get it out of there and, and turn it into a uh, data frame. A few ways of doing it. Um, we could do reset index to turn it into something like this. And you say, oh, hey, each row is now a summary, right? Each row is a summary of the size of the dog and the burrow. So hey, we could go back up and we could do a pivot table with this. Um, another way we could do this is we could say, here, I'll leave that there. Well, first I'll start with this. I'll say, if we have this, 
We get our value counts. We can reset index it to do this. If you get here, use the summary version with pivot table. Another way to convert is to do dot unstack. If you do dot unstack, um, we will now be in a situation where we do have, again, uh, let me throw some medium dogs in here. I feel sad that uh, we don't have any in there. So we had them before. Okay, so if we run dot unstack on our value counts, we now again have every row is our burrow and every column is one of the sizes of dogs. So if we do dot plot here, we will again get groups. Uh, let me back up here. So this is what unstack looks like. Um, unstack will convert from a uh, series into something that looks more like a data frame and it will allow us to do dot plot because we have big, medium, small going across the top. Each one of those becomes a bar and then each one of these rows becomes a cluster of bars. But honestly, do you really want to do DF, group by, breed, value counts, unstack, plot? It's just so much work, so much work. So here's an easier way. If you want to do a simple summary, a simple summary of just counts between burrow and breed, right? Because we have a bunch of burrows, bunch of breeds, we just want to count them. PD cross tab is going to be your best friend. We're going to say, hey, take the burrows, compare them to the breeds. And this magically is just going to say, okay, here's the number of combinations of Bronx and big, Brooklyn big, Manhattan big. Uh, it fills in the zeros here. Whereas when we did our uh, unstack, we have NANs here. It doesn't really matter, but you know, maybe, maybe you feel like it matters. So if we do a cross tab here, it's just going to do a magical count and then we can just do a plot and then it will cluster everything together and it will make that bar graph here. Um, why are there so many ways of doing these things? Why can we do cross tab? Why can we also do unstack? Um, why can we also do reset index? Uh, that's the joy and the misery of pandas. Um, but hopefully now you've seen a few different ways to get your data into a form where you can make a grouped bar chart, um, whether it comes already with every single column being something that you want to plot. Each one of these is going to be a bar. Each one of these is going to be a group. If you're in a situation where every row is a summary, you have to probably use a pivot table in order to convert um, one of your columns into being columns, one of your columns into being rows. Or if every single row is a single data point, uh, you can do, you know, group by to value counts and then, you know, reset index or unstack, something like that. But honestly, if you're just counting, the easiest thing to do is a cross tab. It'll count the combination of the two. And then you can just throw a dot plot on there. Now the final secret, this graphic right here, horizontal bar graph, right? If we want to do a horizontal bar graph, we just change bar to bar H and uh, life becomes nice and easy and fun. So there you go. That is plotting groups. Every group is a row and every bar is a column. Problem solved.